Hello, everybody. This is the LoveWorks Leadership Business Boot Up Edition podcast. I'm Brayden, and I'm joined by my awesome co-host, Kaylee. Hi, Brayden. Every week, we will come to you from, live from LoveWorks campus, where you will have an, hear interviews from young but experienced entrepreneurs who will inspire, educate, and give you an action step to help your leadership and business. The Biz Boot Up podcast partners with the Norman Chamber of Commerce to advocate to see Norman, Oklahoma be a thriving business community. It is powered by First United Bank, who's not like your typical bank. Their purpose is to inspire and empower others to spend life wisely. So a big thank you to Norman Chamber of Commerce and First Night Bank for helping seeing our youngest entrepreneurs achieve their business dreams. So let's get into our first interview and today we are joined by dreamer and doer Shelly Stone. The Stone Sisters brand, Stone Sisters Organic, Stone Sisters Pizza Bar, and Happy Crust Pizza provide yummy, innovative, and trustworthy products. They are internationally recognized on Food Network's Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, and nationally on the Tamron Hall Show. Their local Oklahoma City restaurant, Stone Sisters Pizza Bar, began their healthy junk food journey back in 2017, and since it was built to national distribution of their signature sprouted spelt crust, Happy, that makes your body smile. So hello, Shelly. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. I'm so excited to be here. We are so excited to have you. Yes. Um, at LoveWorks, we're all dreamers and doers, and we'd like to know, do you consider yourself more of a natural dreamer or a doer? I am, I think I'm a dreamer. Uh, the doing part has been uh, challenging, but it's been so much fun. But the dreaming yeah. has always, I've been like that my whole life. Yeah. And so kind of diving in, like, why is that the purpose? Can you tell us more about what was your life like growing up? And can you tell us more about your first dream job? And did it have anything to do with what you're doing right now? You're so right. Uh, so growing up, I, I knew I was different because everybody knew what they wanted to do. And I had no idea. I always acted like I knew what I wanted to do, but we didn't talk about entrepreneurs back then. It's it's a lot more talked about now, but mm -hmm. growing up, I just kept trying different things, and, and uh, I didn't understand that each time you try something and, and you don't grasp onto it, you're just learning. Yeah. You're learning, and you're figuring out, and you're getting to your dream job, but uh, after college, I was in sales. I wanted to be a pharmaceutical sales rep, uh, worked for a corporation for about 10 years, and that was uh, that was wonderful. It led me to where I am now because I learned the opposite of what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's it was my dream job at the time. Yeah. 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 Um, can you tell us about your journey to where you are now with the Stone Sisters brands? So back in 2006, my late husband, he had a seizure, and we took him to the hospital, and he found a brain tumor. And uh, there were six years that we battled, you know, with treatment and surgeries. And uh, after he passed away, uh, I threw myself into health. And I had a family, and I realized back in those, those six years, there was no, back then in Oklahoma, there was no organic foods. Mm -hmm. We had a few stores that were kind of weird. Uh, so I decided to start a organic catering company, and that was Organic Gourmet, and that was fun and great. But it was uh, it was tough because it was hard to get the the ingredients, the organic ingredients, and so after and that was kind of during my husband's battle. Mm -hmm. So uh, after I closed that, you know, it took about another year before him to pass away. Uh, after I closed that, I realized. Um, that I needed to help people. I didn't need to th throw the food at them. I needed to teach them how to be healthy. Yeah. So my sister Tammy and I, we opened up a business called Healthy Journey. And we had a bunch of clients that we would take them shopping. We'd clean out their freeze refrigerator and their, their kitchens and everything. And we had a party for our clients. And we made three meals that were usually unhealthy. We made them healthy. One of them was pizza. And I was just learning about Sprouted's Belt. I just learning that I was gluten intolerant. So I told my sister, Sister Tammy, you make the sauce, I'll make the crust. And it was a big hit. It was a huge hit. Our client said, you need to market this. And we were like, we do? <laughs> So we switched it on over and we started doing the dough ball and sauce, yeah. and uh, but nobody wanted to roll it out. Hmm. So we were we we fell into a restaurant space. A friend of mine was co-packing at this place, and uh, that we brought in our other sister Tracy and uh, Stone Sisters Pizza Bar was born. That's uh, awesome. Kind of like going off that, like even the name Stone Sisters, like it is very obvious, like this is a fam family company, right? And so can you kind of dive into how's that dynamic working with your sisters? 
You know, we grew up and we were all three so different, uh, but we we came back together later in life, and it's it's everything that we had gone through. It, it was it was amazing because when you get to work with your family mm -hmm. and you all understand each other, you understand each other's roles. Nobody's the boss of anybody, but you still understand that you have to do this and you have to do that. And we have the first few years were a little hairy. I won't lie. <laughs> it was a little hairy, but now we are in the position to where we are, we're breaking away from the restaurant business and we are just about to get into Whole Foods. We're about to sign on with a national distributor and we're focusing on the grocery stores because if you think about it, would you rather sell one pizza to somebody or would you rather sell a thousand pizzas to one client that you got? So, so in, you know, in the next few weeks, we're hoping that we dive into Whole Foods. Foods. We had to go through a few hoops before. Whole Foods is great, by the way. If you uh, want to trust a store, trust them because they make you do all of the, <laughs> the things to, to make sure your food is perfect. <laughs> um, I love pizza. Can you tell us more about your, like, Organic, I guess, pizza. Right. Yes. So, uh, it is certified organic. Our spelt, our sprouted spelt crust. But uh, so, spelt is an ancient grain, been around for ten thousand years. When you sprout a grain, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but it's a you can do it to beans and to, to grain and, and lots of food. You soak it in warm water for eight hours, and it what it does is it opens it up and it tur it turns the grain in from a bread carb to a vegetable carb. So your body, when it's eating it, it thinks it's eating a vegetable and instead of a carb, a white, disgusting carb. <laughs> So your body, when you eat our pizza, uh, you don't, you're not bloated. You're you're eating something that is actually nutrient oh. dense and st it's nutritious. Um, so that's what, and it's thin and crispy and it has like a nutty taste. It's really good. I should have brought some for you guys oh. today. What is wrong with me? <laughs> Would have enjoyed that. Yes, I will make sure and get some for you guys. We appreciate that. <laughs> so kind of moving to like our listeners. A lot of our listeners, they they are students or they're just students of life. We can call them, and they're they're wanting to start something new. And so I know you've started a lot of things new. And so mm -hmm. what would be your advice to those students out there who want to do something new, if that's with a business or just an idea in general? I would say, number one, follow your gut. Mm. Uh, the, that's one thing that I've learned is uh, it may not be the right thing at the right time, but your gut will lead you and lead you and lead you. And it will finally lead you to where your life purpose is. And you just have to and take those knocks as as learning because um, I've failed quite a many t quite a bit a lot of times but those failures I learned a lot and I'm so glad I went through it yeah yeah so I would say follow your gut in the beginning um, what has been one of the greatest challenges you faced with your business and how did you overcome that greatest challenge was I wasn't a businesswoman uh, and uh, I had to learn the hard way sometimes that you have to trust people who know what they're doing. Mm. And I'm a dreamer, like I said in the beginning, and so uh, once I brought on people that really knew who they were, like a national marketing director, a CFO, uh, people, I trusted the wrong people in the beginning um, that didn't quite have the same dream, but now I have a great team, and I feel good about uh, where I'm going, and I, and I understand my, not faults, but my, not not my strengths. I have I have a lot of great strengths, but I know what my strengths aren't too. Mm -hmm. So you have to just realize that. Yeah, that's really really good. You know, I, I feel like that's really important though. Is like learning in business. Like I like feel like a lot of times this world just wants us to magnify our strengths, and our strengths are awesome. But I feel like uh, to succeed, like you need to find those not you know you need to find those weaknesses so you can find people to fill those roles. Exactly. Weaknesses are strengths in yeah. ways. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So we love asking this question. So we're gonna take you a little bit back. And we want to know, what is a life lesson that you wish somebody shared with you in middle school or high school? Um, I wish that, that, I wish I had love works. I really do because, like I said before, not knowing what an entrepreneur was and not knowing that I was an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. it was hard and I compared myself with other people and you shouldn't do that. Uh, I'm talking to my daughter about that now is is you uh, following your gut 
and and finding out where your gut takes you that is what I wish somebody would have told me when I was younger because it's so hard when you compare yourself yeah. because not everybody is a doctor um, but you don't want all doctors you've got to have new products and you've got to, you know you want to make your life easier and you want to my my dream is to just change how people look at health food and I call it healthy junk food because pizza everybody loves pizza <laughs> and if it's a healthy pizza that you love to eat I eat it all I probably eat it five times a week lunch or dinner sounds great yeah, I know you yeah. put so many different toppings on it but it's so good yeah so so before we go to our last question, I just want to ask, you kind of mentioned like your dreams. What would be a dream that you would say you're working on right now? My dream is to eventually be national. Mm -hmm. uh, I, want, I want to be in thousands of stores, not because I want to make a bunch of money. It's not about the money. It's because I want to change, the. like I said, I want to change the way people look at healthy food. Mm -hmm. I want people to choose that first, read labels, um, just understand what, and I don't want to be political, what is what the government says uh, is healthy. Mm -hmm. um, just decide for yourself. And yeah. I want people to understand that they can That's they can really decide for themselves. And there's healthy stuff out there. Absolutely. That's good. Absolutely. Yeah. So unfortunately, we're nearing the end, but as our final question, do you have a tip of any kind that you'd like to share with um, our listeners out there that are trying to start their own business? Just free range, any tip that any you tip. want to share to out there. Any kind of tip. Any kind of tip. Oh, goodness. Um, uh, do it. Um, don't look back. Don't um, worry about failures. And just be positive every day. Be happy and be healthy. <laughs> if you're not healthy, nothing matters. <laughs> So, Shelly, thank you so, so much for your time. I know that those who listen to it and that we are better and we will grow for it. And so where else can we find more about you? This is your time just to kind of shout yourself out on the Instagram, LinkedIn, anything. Where can we find more about you and your pizza? Right. I would go to Stone Sisters Organics or StoneSistersPizza.com. Yeah. That will tell you everything about us, the location of where our stores are. But be looking for us. We are uh, We're going to start um, uh, Shopify mail, mailing out nationally here in October hopefully awesome yeah, yeah so we'll be able to get out there and, and anybody can get it sweet so that was an awesome interview what was something that really stuck out to you that you want to just repeat for the viewers probably that she emphasized really being positive and yeah. looking forward in your business and those big dreams that she has yeah. that she's like activating and going for it yeah very inspired yeah I love and you also mentioned like for you like personally it's not about the money but changing that like stick around healthy food and I love that you, you can just see your passion for what you're doing and I think that speaks a lot to business like if you have that passion that business will flow and that, that money will flow afterwards and so truly viewers find that passion and roll with it and that says anything but we'll be right back real soon with our next student business but until then we'll stay tuned. He was born and raised in a small town Oklahoma and is currently a freshman at Epic Charter Schools. He spends all of his free time either volunteering or listening to music. But over the summer, he discovered one of his passions to be mixology through the opportunity to make drinks at the early event with Master Chef Gabriel Lewis. From there, he was able to start his own business at Baylor's Bevs and sells at the Norman, Norman Park Market. He is integral to the business boot up podcasting where he serves in every role available. Yeah, so we get working there a whole, whole lot. A lot of the times you get to see him behind the camera, I say you get to see him. You don't get to see him behind the camera, and he's running all his audio, and so it's really good to see you in front of the camera today, and so we're glad you're here today, Baylor. Happy to be here. And right. so we want to learn more about your, you and your story, and so what is Baylor's Bevs, and what do you all do? Okay, so Baylor's Bevs is just a little idea I had, like I said, at the early event. And the whole entire idea behind it was to do custom-made drinks. So usually whenever you get a drink, it's like, here's your menu, pick one of these options, and if you don't like what you see, too bad. Mm -hmm. But I wanted people to have that option. I want people to be like, okay, I like this flavor, I like this flavor, let's mix them together. Yeah. So Yeah, and so I really love that. You, you take things that you love and you want to make other people love it. And what would you say was a point where you became really serious about this business story? Definitely at the early event. I mean, cooking with Chef Gabe, that was just an incredible experience. Like, something I'll never forget. Yeah. So in that moment, I was just like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. That's awesome. So 
Yeah. Kind of like diving into that early event, like what all did you learn? Like what are some of the things you learned with uh, Chef Gabriel Lewis? Literally everything I know now, I learned from him in that moment. So how to make the drinks, how to give the drinks to people, pretty much how to sell, I learned from him. That's awesome, man. That's super cool. So I know you touched on earlier that people can sort of pick them out, but I've been to the farm market, and I know you have selected flavors. Can you uh, tell us more about that? <laughs> okay, yeah. So just for looks purposes, I do have a few cust or already pre-made drinks for people to order. Mm -hmm. One being called Peach Ring, and one of them called Prickly L, named after Lilberks' very own. So. That's awesome. So can you talk about those flavors? Like, what are all in those flavors? Just so oh, the see. viewers know out there. Of course. Uh, so, the prick, uh, yeah, the prickly L is a mix of a prickly pear syrup and lime juice Ooh. added to Sprite. Okay. And the peach ring is peach and a uh, pomegranate syrup added to Sprite. Okay. I like it. I like it. So, kind of moving on to, like, you you talked about, you've learned a lot of things with business, of course, how to do your business. Uh, what were you saying, what would be one of the biggest things you've learned about selling your product? How to talk to people is huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't know how to, like, greet people whenever they come to you, you're not going to make a sale. Mm -hmm. So, learning how to, like, overcome that little bit of anxiety, because there's always anxiety whenever mm -hmm. you're out talking to strangers. Like, you've never met these people before in your life. So overcoming that anxiety of talking to the people and actually being able to make like a good first impression. Yeah. Kind of like on a similar thing, you kind of talked about like that anxiety. What would you say were one of the biggest challenges that you faced in starting your business and how did you overcome those? Okay, so the biggest challenge was actually surprisingly creating like the logo mm -hmm. and all those just like finishing details. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not going to lie, I procrastinated. And like a few days before I sold is whenever I had to make the logo, make the menu, and get everything like buckled down to sell. Yeah. One last thing, before we get to our last question, I just want you to kind of have this time, just feel free to me as I know you've been able to take a lot of information just by being in the back scene of listening to so many businesses, but also now starting your own. And I would love to hear, what would be that one piece of advice that you want to leave with our viewers? Uh, that is okay to be afraid, genuinely. Like, it comes with the territory. You're gonna be afraid doing this. I've learned that. Like, people say, "Oh, you'll overcome it." You do, but it doesn't just go away. Yeah. So. You're scared, right? Exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's like always the person that's bigger, has more money, just yeah. everything. Exactly. You just to do that. And so, for our last question, on a different note, what has been one of your favorite parts of starting your own business? Ooh, hearing the reactions. <laughs> People come into this and they're just like, oh, it's just going to be a normal drink, but they try it and you can see the look in their eyes whenever they try it. Like, they genuinely enjoy your product. It's like a first place. It is. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. That was a great interview. Baylor, thank you so much for being on here. I know I, I'm so glad that you get to get in front of the camera and some viewers that right now have seen your face but know your work, you know, finally see it. So, really, really great. What was something that stuck out to you, Sam? Uh, the fact that he said that there will always be something... Uh, just greater, greater than you in general, yeah. and you just have to learn how to deal with it and just, you know, sit the ground. I, I truly love just kind of like going off of both of that, like that fear. Like there's going to be fear. You will be afraid doing some of the stuff you do, but the reason why I know that you push through that fear is that you genuinely have a passion for what you're doing. And I feel like in business and in life in general, yes, you are going to be scared out of your mind doing some things, and if you are scared out of your mind but you don't have a passion for it, you're going to, you're going to stumble, you're going to fall. But if you are truly passionate about what you're doing, that passion is going to keep you going through those times where it's like, oh gosh, I don't want to talk to this person. Um, and so that was really good. I know I can just see your passion when you talk about it. So next week we'll be back with two new business owners that will hopefully inspire, educate, and give you a powerful point of action to grow your idea or business. Also remember to find us on our, on our new profile, the Business Move Up podcast on Spotify, Apple, and SoundCloud. And if you're you're already here on this podcast, but make sure to send it to somebody you know. Make sure they know where to find us. So we want to send a huge thank you to the Norman Chamber of Commerce and First United Bank and Love Works Leadership for believing in our youngest entrepreneurs. And remember, real leaders don't blend in. They stand down. Dream big. And your dreams. Bye, y'all.